Most people look at Campy Flegre and think if it is not erupting, it must be calming down. The latest weekly report says the opposite. In the last seven days, instruments have logged 34 small earthquakes. The fastest part of the caldera is still rising at about 25 millimeters per month, and Italy's civil protection keeps the volcano on yellow alert, officially marked as medium disequilibrium. No ash over Naples, no lava fountains, just a ground that has already lifted more than one and a half meters since 2005 and is still slowly pushing upward. Here's the important part. This is not an all-clear week. It is the kind of week that quietly prepares the conditions for whatever comes next. If you stand in Pozzuoli today and look around, nothing screams emergency. Shops open, cars move, the sea looks calm. But the weekly bulletin from INGV's Vesuvius Observatory tells a very different story, one that you only see when you read the numbers. Between the 8th and the 14th of December, instruments recorded and located 34 earthquakes under Campi Flagre. Most of them were small, shallow events. The largest reached only about magnitude 2.0 plus or minus 0 0.3. That is the kind of jolt you might feel as a brief shake if you are very close. If you are in a noisy street, you may not notice anything at all. Here's the important part. Those 34 quakes are happening in a piece of ground that is still rising. Since the 10th of October, the fastest part of the uplift zone has been moving upward at roughly 25 millimeters per month with an uncertainty of about three millimeters. In plain language, that is around two and a half centimeters of extra height every single month in the area of maximum deformation. Add that to the long-term picture and it becomes clearer since 2005, the surface here has already risen by more than one and a half meters. The floor of the caldera is now higher than it was a generation ago and it is still slowly pushing up. The chemistry tells the same story. In the Solfatara area where hot gases escape measurements, show that the hydrothermal system continues to warm. A key fumarole known as BG is now around 173 degrees Celsius with a gentle but steady upward trend. Gas output remains elevated compared with quieter decades. Put together the uplift, the cluster of small quakes and the hotter fumaroles all point in one direction. Pressure in the shallow system is not easing. It is being adjusted and redistributed, but it is not going back to the old baseline. And this is where it really matters. The weekly report is very clear that there are no signs of a sudden short-term jump toward an imminent eruption. This is not a tomorrow morning scenario, but it is also clear that the unrest which began years ago has not reversed. The caldera is still in motion. The fact that the square over Naples looks normal does not change the underlying trend written into these numbers. In the next part of this update, we will leave the raw measurements and look at the label that controls daily life around Campi Flagre, Italy's Yellow Alert Phase 2. Attenzione! We will unpack what medium disequilibrium actually means for monitoring emergency planning and for families living on top of this slowly lifting ground. If you live in the Bay of Naples, you hear one color again and again. Yellow. Not red, not green, yellow. On paper, that sounds harmless. Many people quietly translate it to, they are worried, but it is probably fine. The official system says something more precise. Here's the important part. Campi Flagre has been on yellow alert since 2012, and every serious review since then has decided to keep it there. Back in 2012, Italy's civil protection moved the volcano from green to yellow because three things were clearly changing. Earthquakes were becoming more frequent. The chemistry of the gas was shifting, and the ground was already rising. Since 2005, that uplift has added up to more than 150 centimeters in the central area. On top of that, since 2018, there have been stronger events, including quakes up to about magnitude 4.6. None of this fits a system returning to its old quiet baseline. On the 30th of October, 2025, the government updated its risk models and made a fresh decision. The result was not back to normal. It was a new decree that keeps Campi Flagre, yet yellow formally classifies the volcano as being in medium disequilibrium and confirms the operational phase two attentioning. What does that actually mean in daily life? It does not mean evacuations. It does not mean people must leave Naples or Pozzuoli. It means three things have to stay switched on at all times. First, enhanced monitoring. Scientists are required to watch the volcano with denser networks, more instruments, and closer reporting. Second, continuous review of emergency plans. Local and national authorities have to keep evacuation routes, shelter plans, and communication chains updated. Not in a drawer.
Third, training and public information. Drills, briefings, and awareness campaigns are not optional extras. They are a built-in part of phase two. And this is where it really matters for residents. Yellow is not a half danger color. It is a signal that the system is out of balance, that something in the volcano hydrothermal complex is still adjusting, and that society has to live in a permanent state of watchfulness, not panic, while that adjustment continues. In the next part of this update, we will turn to a very different kind of headline, a new scientific study that combines earthquakes and ground deformation to improve short-term forecasting. We will look at what this proof of concept really adds to our understanding of Brady Seaism and why it should be read as a small step toward better predictions, not as a warning that a big quake is about to strike tomorrow. While the ground keeps rising and the earthquakes keep coming, scientists are also quietly trying to do something very simple and very hard. Turn unrest into numbers that can be forecast even a little bit better than before. A new study summarized in local Pozzuoli News and published in the journal Seismica looks at Campi Flegre's unrest since 2005. The starting point is familiar. The caldera has been lifting steadily for years. Swarms of small earthquakes come and go. Most short-term forecasting models for quakes in such settings use only the earthquake sequence itself. One event triggers another, which triggers another. That family of models is known as ETIS. Here's the important part. The new work adds one more piece to the puzzle. Not just when and where earthquakes happen, but how the ground itself is deforming. Using high-precision GNSS, essentially very accurate GPS, the researchers build a version of ETA um, that includes a deformation term. In other words, they ask the model to pay attention not only to past quakes, but also to how the surface is slowly bending and lifting. When they run this improved model on the Campi Flagre data set, a pattern shows up. Seismicity reacts to ground deformation with an average delay of about 10 days. When uplift changes, the rate of small earthquakes tends to respond roughly a week and a half later. In purely statistical tests, the model that includes deformation does a better job at describing and forecasting the short-term evolution of quakes than the classic ETIS version. It captures the link between slow pressure changes in the system and the timing of the small shocks we see on the seismographs. And this is where it really matters for how we talk about this study. The authors themselves describe it as a proof of concept, not as a finished warning tool. It is a step toward understanding how Bredeseism, slow uplift, and earthquake swarms are connected. It is not a red flag that a big earthquake is coming in 10 days. It does not give a date, a magnitude, or a simple yes or no for future events. It gives scientists a clearer way to test ideas about how the volcano hydrothermal system transfers stress into the rock. For people living around Campi Flegre, the message is almost the opposite of a sensational headline. The study does not say run now. It says we are starting to measure the system more intelligently. For emergency planners and observatories, the long-term hope is that models like this, combined with gas deformation and thermal data, will one day make it easier to recognize when the pattern is shifting from background unrest towards something more dangerous. In the final part of this update, we will step back from the equations and look at the full picture. Uplift that will not stop. 34 quakes in a week. A long-standing yellow alert. New science that nudges forecasting forward. What does all of that really mean for residents of Naples and Pozzuoli today? And for viewers in the United States, Germany, the UK and Canada who are trying to understand whether Campi Flegre is a ticking bomb or a long, slow negotiation between the earth and the city above it. If you live in Naples or Pozzuoli today, nothing in your window view shouts emergency. Buses run, kids go to school, the sea in the bay looks almost calm. The only sign of unrest is invisible numbers in a weekly report that most people never read. It is easy to think if there is no eruption and no red alert, then I do not need to worry right now. Here's the important part. The story around Campi Flagre today is not run, but it is also not forget. It is live ready. If you live inside the caldera a week like this is the right time to do the quiet work that makes all the difference later. It means checking once that you know where the official information comes from. INGV's Vesuvius Observatory, Italy's civil protection, your regional and city channels. It means knowing which sirens apps or TV stations will carry a change in the alert level. It means looking at the official hazard maps and asking a simple question. Is my home, my children's school, 
or my usual route to work inside an area that has seen damage in past crises. Those are not dramatic steps. They do not make for viral videos. They are the kind of preparation that only shows its value when the next swarm, the next strong quake, or the next change in color actually arrives. For local authorities, yellow in phase two, attenzione means something similar. You do not evacuate an entire bay because the ground is rising two and a half centimeters a month. But you also do not wait until a red alert to discover that your evacuation plans are outdated. Phase two demands that monitoring networks stay dense, that drills actually happen, that communication lines between scientists, civil protection, and mayors are tested before they are needed in a hurry. And this is where it really matters for people watching from far away. In the United States and Germany, in the UK and Canada, from a distance, Campi Flagre is often presented as a super volcano ticking time bomb. That phrase sells headlines. It does not match the reality on the ground today. The real picture is more demanding and less cinematic, a caldera in long-term unrest, a yellow alert that has lasted more than a decade slow. Uplift, small quakes, hotter gases in a city learning how to live on top of a system that is out of balance, but not exploding. For you as a viewer, the most useful reaction is not panic. It is literacy. Understanding what medium disequilibrium means. Knowing that yellow is a long game, not a weekend scare. Recognizing that a new scientific model that links ground deformation and seismicity is a small, careful step forward, not a prophecy that the big one will hit in 10 days. Campi Flagre will not settle its argument with the crust in a single week or a single bulletin. The uplift, the earthquakes, the guardian, and the science are all parts of a slow negotiation between the earth below and the city above. The choice we have is whether to ignore that negotiation until the loudest moment or to follow it calmly now when there is still time to adapt. So tonight the message is simple. If you live in the Bay of Naples, use this quiet yellow week to make sure you know your information sources, your routes, and your plans. If you are watching from abroad, use it to learn how to read these alerts before the next big headline hits your screen. The more clearly we understand what Campi Flegre is really doing today, the better prepared we will be for whatever chapter comes next. If you want steady, clear updates like this whenever Campi Flegre Etna or any other volcano changes its behavior, and when flood storms or other natural hazards make the news, consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications so you do not miss the next update. And tell us in the comments when you hear that the ground under Campi Flagre has risen more than a meter and a half since 2005. Does it change the way you think about this quiet week? If we step back from today's bulletin and look at Campi Flagre from a distance, the pattern becomes clearer. The ground is still rising. The earthquakes are still coming. The alert is still yellow. The science is still moving forward in small, careful steps. Here's the important part. Nothing we have seen this week is a cinematic turning point, but everything we have seen this week is part of the long buildup that decides what future turning points can look like. For Naples and Pozzuoli, that means learning to live with a volcano that does not follow the simple script of asleep or erupting. Campi Flagre has been in unrest for years. The surface lifts by centimeters, not meters. The quakes are in the magnitude two range, not seven. The alert color sits on yellow, not red. Yet slowly, quietly, the physical shape of the bay is changing, and the way people think about the ground under their feet has to change with it. And this is where it really matters for viewers in the United States, in Germany, in the UK, in Canada, and anywhere else. Campi Flagre is not just an Italian story. It is a blueprint for how we will have to live with many hazards in a warming, crowded world. A long period of medium disequilibrium is not dramatic enough for breaking news. It is exactly the kind of pressure cooker that the tests whether our monitoring systems, our emergency plans, and our public communication can handle slow rolling risk without burning people out. The new forecasting model that links ground deformation and earthquakes is a perfect symbol of that. It does not give a date for a disaster. It gives us a slightly sharper lens to watch the process by which pressure builds and releases over time. So what does that mean for you watching this video tonight? If you live near Campi Flegre, it means using quiet yellow weeks to get one step more ready than you were last month. Confirm where you get official alerts. Look once at a hazard map. Talk calmly with your family about what you would do if the alert ever changed. If you live far away, it means treating stories like this as a chance to become fluent in the language of risk. 
Colors, levels, uplift Brady Seism, not just explosions and ash. In the end, Campi Flagre is a reminder that the Earth rarely shouts without clearing its throat first. Right now, the caldera is still in the throat clearing stage. The question is not whether we can stop that process, we cannot. The question is whether we will be paying calm attention when the tone changes. If you want steady, clear coverage whenever Campi Flagrai Etna or any other volcano changes its behavior, and when flood storms or earthquakes reshape the map for a few hours or a few years, consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications so you do not miss the next update. And tell us in the comments, does knowing how much the ground has already risen under Campi Figre change the way you see this quiet week? Or does it still feel distant until the day the sky turns gray? When this video finishes and you go back to your evening, most of what you heard will start to blur. Names, numbers, dates, colors. So let's keep three simple things. First, Campi Flegre is not calm and it is not exploding. It sits in between. The ground has risen more than one and a half meters since 2005. This week added 34 small quakes and a steady uplift of about two and a half centimeters a month in the most active zone. Yellow alert does not mean safe or run. It means stay awake. Here's the important part. The danger at Campi Flegre is not one surprise day. It is the long, slow pressure that builds in the background. Second, the system watching this volcano is real and working. INGV, the Civil Protection Department, local authorities, satellite networks, new scientific models that combine earthquakes and ground deformation. None of them can promise to predict the exact hour of a crisis. But together, they make it much harder for Campi Flegre to move from unrest to dangerous without leaving a trail of signals behind. Third, you are not powerless in this story. If you live in the Bay of Naples, your power is preparation, knowing your sources, knowing your roads, talking calmly with your family. If you live far away, your power is understanding, learning the language of uplift bradycism and alert levels so you are not at the mercy of the loudest headline. And this is where it really matters, because the volcano will keep doing what volcanoes do. The only real choice is whether we meet it with panic and rumors or with clear eyes and ready minds. Tonight, Campi Flagre is still yellow. The ground is still rising. The quakes are still small. The science is still moving forward, one careful step at a time. The story is not over. It is just between chapters. If you want someone to walk you through those chapters without drama, but without denial, you know where to find us. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and tell us in the comments what you want to understand better next time. Is it the uplift, the game, the evacuation plans, or the way scientists decide when yellow has to become something else?